Hey guys, today I'll be doing a quick tutorial on how to have a more advanced depth map which includes particles in the depth layer. So I'll be breaking this tutorial down into two parts. The first is how to add particles into your depth composition and the second is what it's useful for, um, especially uh, your depth of field. Uh, so I'll also be doing a quick part at the end explaining that. So let's get started. So obviously to begin, you'll need to create a new uh, project. So let me import the clips, um, I'll create a new folder, clips, and let's paste them all in there. So obviously you probably won't need as many layers as me, but uh, so long as you record a depth layer, you should be ready to go. So let me create a new composition, let's drag it onto there. And now let me go into project settings, okay, 1080p, set the FPS to 24, and I'll also name this depth tutorial. Okay, so let me import the other clips. So the first thing we want to do is actually get a camera track so we can import our particular in. So let me find a good part, I think this should work for the camera track. So let me, let's do it from here. Um, separate all those and delete this. And I'll do it all the way to here. This should work. So let me delete those. Awesome. Um, so 3D camera tracker. And while this is happening, I'll explain all the layers I have. So obviously I have my depth there. Um, you might notice there is no view model on this um, and that's something I'm going to fix. Yours might, so if it does, great. You can skip this step. Um, I also have the empty world, which I'm using for the camera track. After this is done, I can delete it. Uh, I've also got a matte layer, which is for the players. I can also delete this. I won't be needing it for the tutorial. I've got the view model, uh, which we'll fix in a minute. And I have a world which includes players. So for the view model, while the camera is still tracking, let's select this and add key light. Screen color green. So it's slightly invisible there and it's also slightly discolored. So let me adjust the screen balance. 25 should work, yep. And screen mat, I'll reduce the clip white to about that. That should work well, great. So if we want to add this into our sort of depth, depth layer. What we're going to need to do is duplicate the view model, drag it all the way up to the top and add fill. Let me change the color to white. Also, um, in case you were wondering, this is called Effects Console. It's by Video Copilot and if you use After Effects at all, highly recommend it. It's a great plugin and it will speed up your workflow immensely. Um, so just a quick tip. Now what we want to do is select both of these and we'll create uh, a new depth map which includes the view model. So pre companies control shift and C and let's name this depth map. Great. Um, also during this tutorial, uh, you might have noticed already, I'm not going to be doing any velocity. It's not important to this uh, and there's plenty of tutorials already on that type of thing. So you can follow one of those instead. So our camera should have finished tracking. Perfect. So let me view this layer again. All right, let's select this ground. Right click, create null in camera. And one thing I'm going to quickly do as well, actually, this includes um, a script. Um, there's a video, I'll leave a link in the description down below which explains in detail about how to use it and what it actually does. But basically, um, if you're doing anything in 3D, I highly recommend this plugin. It makes placing objects in 3D far, far simpler. Um, so it's a great tool to use. Basically, uh, you want to scale your null until it looks like a, a fairly normal size. I'd say about this would work well. And we want to name it to ground. Now, if I select this and the 3D camera tracker, go to File, Scripts, and Normalize Track. 
and basically what this does is it adjusts um, the camera so that when you place objects into 3D you don't need to worry about where in the project they are they'll automatically be placed where the ground layer is and so you can easily move those about in your composition so now I've done these let me drag these all the way to the bottom and I can hide the ground layer as well now so one thing I do recommend is always keeping your depth layers at the top of your composition it makes everything more organized and you won't accidentally add effects to it that you don't want so now we've done this we can add our particular and I can also delete the empty world I really have no need for this anymore great so let's add up particular um, control and Y and let's name our new solid particles and let's have particular okay I'm just going to shorten these um, it just annoys me a bit nothing much all right and let's go into our designer so um, to, for this tutorial um, I won't be using these particles and there's something I'll cover at the end about transparency. Basically, uh, make sure feathering is disabled, otherwise you'll have issues when using depth of field due to depth flares just having issues when uh, using transparent objects. So for this tutorial though, I will be using a sprite. I think I've got some stuff in here. Let me see if this will work. Hopefully. Okay, if I set the position to 960 by 540 by 0. Hey, there we go. That should work well. And um, Alright, we'll leave it like this for a minute. As you can see, we have some leaves. And uh, I can adjust that to maybe 25. Maybe even less. Um, 5. Okay. Um, also, in emitter. Uh, as you might be able to see, the particles aren't visible. What you can do to fix that is go to Emission Extras and Pre-Run, set that to 100. And basically that just means that at the start of the composition, you will already have 100% of the particles and it won't only start emitting them at the start of your composition. It does that before. So this should work well. Um, let me alter the size of our emitter as well. Um, image size X, uh, Y can extend that a bit. Um, position it can alter this quite a lot. Um, and Z, let me increase this quite a lot. Increase the Y, and let's increase the the X by quite a lot. All right, um, put this up a bit more. I can also increase the X I think a lot more and let me move this back okay this should work and let me increase this to, to 40 I've probably got far too many particles in the scene but um, this is just to sort of uh, explain how it works and make it a bit simpler to, to see so this should work well um, so obviously uh, we have an issue with our particles being visible uh, behind walls. So this is properly where the tutorial with the depth map starts. So what you want to do is go into visibility and for the setting called Z buffer, select your depth map. As you can already see, some particles have disappeared. When we selected this, if we set this off and turn it back on, you can see the difference. Uh, that's great, but there are still particles such as this one and this, which should be invisible. So let's start altering the Z at black. Um, I'd say normally a good starting point is 5000, and you can adjust it from there. So let me set to 5000, yeah, so this particle is almost gone now, so let me reduce it a bit more. Okay, it's gone there. Are there any other particles that we have issues with? doesn't look like it okay I don't know it feels like there's a couple that shouldn't be visible so let me reduce this a bit more say for me at least 3700 seems to be seems to be quite good all right so I'll leave that there 
what you can do now is we need to add particles to our depth buffer. So let me duplicate my camera and particles and let me drag these to the top and I shall pre-comp them. And let's call this Z depth particles. All right, if I open this up, what you can see, we have our particles, uh, the camera, it also imports the depth map um, and also it has our sprite. So the reason I'm using sprites for this tutorial is they're slightly more complex than particles, but the same applies for both of these. Um, let me also quickly show you, so if I open up the transparency grid, you can see uh, at the minute we just have particles. We need to change this. So if I add a black solid and put it at the bottom, we still have our particles visible. But the way we add particles to the depth is by using transparency and making the particles white, being close to the camera. So they become more transparent the further away they are, which corresponds to being further from the camera. So with sprites, what you need to do is go to particle and you might have uh, sprite colorized or polygon, polygon colorized. What you want to do is if you have a sprite set to sprite fill, if it's a textured polygon, set it to polygon fill. Now what you want to do is change the set color to at start and make sure it's set to white. You also need to check opacity and make sure the opacity is 100 and opacity over life. The less you use transparency, the better due to issues with the depth map, as I said before. Um, but this, for the most part, should work fine. So what we need to do now is go to visibility and leave this how it is with the Z buffer. But if we come up here, change near start fade to one, fast start fade to one, and fast start vanish, if we copy this value, you can just paste it in. So as you might be able to see, some particles have got darker than they were before. If I disable this, you can see they got brighter again. And if I put it back on, some of them get slightly darker. Great. So now, if I pre-comp our depth maps, actually what I need to do is duplicate our depth map first. Uh, I'll explain why in a minute, but then we can just pre-comp both of these. And let's call this depth with particles. All right, so if I go to mode here, um, if you don't have it, you can go here and toggle switches slash modes and you should be able to find it. Um, so if I go into mode and set this to screen, we now have particles in our composition. Now, some of these might be slightly too bright. So actually what we can do is add levels. And if I drag this, the further away the particles are, the darker they get. And so you can also adjust the midpoint um, and also like the close, but obviously all I recommend is adjusting where they become black. So I think here is good for me. So now let me explain why we duplicated our depth map. The reason being, uh, as you saw in here, the particles use this depth map to know where they are visible or not. Um, but then if in this composition I set the particles to use the depth with particles, I think you should be able to see the issue. Most of them, and here's a good example, most of them become almost transparent. Um, and if I set this back to the depth map, they become visible again. This is due to the particles basically trying to obscure themselves. So make sure you duplicate the depth map so four particles have a regular depth map and for everything else, you can use particles with um, the depth map with them in it. Great, so I think that covers everything uh, for this first part of the tutorial and now I'll quickly go over uh, depth of field. So 
if I add a new adjustment there above the particles, and let's name this depth of field. Uh, you can use multiple different types of camera lens blur for this, but I recommend FL depth of field or BCC fast lens blur. Um, so let me apply FL depth of field. And now we can select our depth there, uh, depth with particles, and set this to effects and masks because we can now add levels to this. So um, now to add the blur, let's change the radius to 50. And obviously, so the background is out of focus now and close to the camera is in focus. Um, actually, this also brings up one other point when doing this, make sure that white is close to the camera and black is far away, um, makes everything simpler. And uh, you might have it where black is close and in the distance is white. Invert the depth there because it will fix a lot of issues you can get with certain plugins. And it is the only way, as far as I know, to properly do the depth with the particles. So make sure that you have white close to the camera and black being in the distance. So, then for our depth, as you can see, some of these particles are in focus or almost in focus and in the distance, they are still completely blurred, which is exactly what we want. So if I put this view back to normal, I can now adjust the focal point. So let's change it to this building. And as you can see, these particles are still slightly blurred. However, these close ones are much more blurred and it's more realistic. Uh, I'll demonstrate if you don't use the depth map, obviously the amount of blur in the particles depends on what's actually behind them, not where the particles are themselves, which is a whole reason for using this tutorial, so that particles are blurred independent of the background behind them. So I hope this clears up any confusions about depth of field or how to use particles in your depth layer. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And if you have any ideas for other tutorials you want me to cover, leave them down in the comment below. I'll read through all of them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.